Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service for Sunday, October 1st, 2023. Begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 37, is the appointed gospel lesson for today. And when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I'll also ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? They discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? If we say from man, we're afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, but you do not believe in him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, dear friends. How do you know you're following uh, the will of God? It's a question that's vexed many a Christian. What exactly is the will of God? And, and how do I know I'm following God's will? Is the will of God a, a feeling that we have in our heart, or is it something more concrete? Certainly, you can look back on events in your life and see how God has worked his will, just as the Apostle Paul writes to the church at Rome when he says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. So you can look back in your life and see how God has worked his will. You can also look forward to your life knowing that God will work his will in your life. But how can you know for certain what God's will is for you? In fact, what his will is for everyone now and going into the future. Well, Jesus explains that and tells us in our text that we can know for certain the Father's will. To set the scene, it's Holy Week. Monday of Holy Week, Jesus had just entered the city of Jerusalem the day before on Palm Sunday, riding on the back of a donkey to resounding cheers and praises. Palm branches marked the road that Jesus traveled, and people cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, the religious leaders of the day witnessed this, and they realized that their control over the people and the power over the religious affairs of the nation were at risk. They found Jesus teaching in the temple that day, and they asked Jesus a question. By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Put it another way, they're asking Jesus, who do you think you are? Well, we're a lot like those religious leaders, aren't we? Because when push comes to shove, we like to think that we are in charge. We make the decisions, come what may. There are great many times in our life that we don't like others telling us what to do. And when God tells us to do something that we don't want to do, well, we push back. We don't like God telling us what to do, especially when the world or even our sinful hearts wants to do differently. We'd feel more comfortable if God would change with the times say that, you know, we should become more accustomed to the culture, to live and conform our lives to popular opinion today, because that's how the vast majority of people are living their lives. But you see, God doesn't call you and me to conform our lives to the world. Jesus calls us to do the Father's will which is not to conform to the ways or will of the world, not to be shaped by popular opinion or conventional wisdom. And that's the point that Jesus is making in our text for today. Those who believe in Jesus are called to follow 
Jesus. And that's why Jesus answers the religious leader's question with a question of his own. The baptism of John, where did it come from? From heaven or from man? And they discussed this among themselves. They realized that they were in a catch-22, because if they said from heaven, then Jesus would say, well, why didn't you believe in him? But if they said from man, they were afraid of the people who believed that John was a prophet. The religious leaders of that day liked the power and prestige that they possessed as a result of their position. They were in control. They didn't want to relinquish control. And that's why they answered Jesus in the manner that they did. They liked the status quo. They didn't want to change. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. And Jesus said, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. But then Jesus proceeded to expand on what he was teaching the people in the temple that day by telling a parable. A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. He went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Jesus then asked the question, which of the two did the will of his father? And they all agreed that the first did, the one who changed his mind and did the will of the father. See, that first son changed his mind, changed his attitude, and did what he was asked to do. That's the very definition of repentance. He repented. He did the will of the father. The other son he paid lip service. He said one thing and did another. Jesus' purpose, his mission, his will in his life was to do the will of his heavenly Father. And Jesus said as much when he said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. And that's what Jesus came to do, to do the will of the heavenly Father. Just as Paul writes in our epistle lesson for today, from, Ephes uh, from Philippians chapter 2, Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. But we know the good news that Jesus didn't stay dead in the tomb. He rose again, and now he is seated in glory at the right hand of the Father. For Jesus did the will of the Heavenly Father, living, dying, rising again for the salvation of sinners, so that all sin would be forgiven. And the good news today is that your sins are forgiven, all on account of Jesus. They've been nailed to the cross, washed away in the Savior's blood. Because this is the will of God. Paul writes, God our Savior desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. There, the scripture clearly declares what the will of God is, that he wants everyone to repent, to believe in Jesus as their Savior, and then live their lives for Jesus. Yes, God desires the salvation of every human being. And that's why Jesus makes this shocking statement. Truly, I say to you, the tax collectors and prostitutes go to the kingdom of God before you. Tax collectors such as the Apostle Matthew, Zacchaeus, well, they turn from their sinful lifestyle of cheating people out of their hard-earned income they changed their ways, they repented, they believed, and they followed Jesus all the days of their life. Same with the prostitutes. Mary Magdalene was a woman of the evening. The woman at the well that Jesus meets in John chapter 4. Had six husbands, and the one she was living with was, was not her husband. Well, these women repented. They trusted in Christ for forgiveness and eternal life. So what does that mean for you and me? Well, God loves the sinner. 
God loves you with an everlasting love, which is why he sent Jesus into this world to be your Savior. And God's will for you and me is clearly this, that we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That daily we examine ourselves in the light of God's law. We recognize our sinfulness. We confess our sins before God. We, we confess, we repent. For if you confess your sins before God, he will forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then God gives us opportunities to live for him. In your baptism, God has washed away your sins and has made you his child. You are now our little Christ in the midst of the people that you associate with each and every day. And so as a little Christ, as a Christian, God places you in certain situations in your life gives you opportunities where you can show your faith and witness to others about Jesus so God's will would be done that they might repent of their sins and believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's the meaning of the parable. To do the work needed in the vineyard. One of the problems with the Pharisees and religious leaders of that day is that they rejected Jesus and they rejected the gospel. They rejected the very means by which they were to be saved. They didn't think they needed a change of heart. They thought they were fine just the way they were. And yet Jesus called the Pharisees, indeed he, he calls every sinner, including you and me, to have a change of heart, a change of attitude, to repent to believe in Jesus and then with faith in him go work in his vineyard. Doing God's work in this messed up world that we live in, changed by Christ's love, we then are empowered by Christ's love to do what the Father requests, that is share the message of Christ with others. The Lord presents us many opportunities to do this each and every day of our life and throughout the week to care and to share the love of Christ with those around us. Paul tells us to make the most of those opportunities. And it's our joyful privilege to do this for Jesus, to live as a Christian amongst those who don't know Jesus and his love. The vineyard that we live in, that is the world in which we live in, will always have troubles and trials and tribulations. But in repenting of our sins and turning to Christ, Jesus not only forgives us, but transforms us in our baptism to live as his people. And in living for Christ and sharing his love, we thereby do the Father's will to his honor and glory and in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep both our hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be and abide with you now and always. Amen. Been watching an abbreviated worship service for Sunday, October 1st, 2023. We hope that you join us next Sunday at 1015 in person, in worship at Redeemer Lutheran Church, 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio. Till next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you.